Imagine you're a bee flying around, minding your own business, when suddenly you feel a tiny sting in your abdomen. You shake it off. Maybe it was nothing, but later that night, you feel a twinge in your little bee stomach. You head off into the night looking for relief, but the pain inside you grows larger. It becomes so intense that you can't even fly anymore. You're left crawling around on the ground, disoriented. The fire in your belly feels like something is eating your insides. And then, suddenly, it's all over. So what happened? This happened. Apocephalus borealis, also known as the zombie fly. The zombie fly is a tiny parasitic fly that lays its eggs inside of honeybees. So they find a honeybee, they latch onto its abdomen, and they use the hypodermic needle-like ovipositor to inject the egg. They lay multiple eggs, the eggs inside hatch, and they start eating the insides of the bee. About seven days after this happens, that's when the maggots emerge out between the head and the thorax, so in the neck region, like right around here, they just pop out. Leela Higgins spends a good portion of her time examining dead bees for signs of zombie flies. I just found another honeybee that had been infected and there's a big hole right between uh, its head and its thorax. So that cavity right there, that's where the maggots emerged from. The zombie fly was first identified early in the 20th century, but until recently, it was thought to only infect certain wasps and bumblebees. It wasn't until a discovery in San Francisco in 2011 revealed that the parasitoid was now targeting honeybees. Since this discovery, there have been many reports of infected bees, which can be identified because they begin to exhibit erratic behavior. After an individual honeybee gets parasitized by one of these flies, they have a very hard time acting normally. It's going to cause some discomfort having your insides eaten as you're still alive. Infected honeybees are often found staggering around on the ground at night, having abandoned their hive. Well, they're not exactly sure if they leave so they can help the rest of the hive stay healthy, or if they get kicked out of the hive when another member of the hive notices that they're sick. There's a whole bunch of interesting science that's, that's going, going on to figure that out. The zombie fly totally disrupts the life of the honeybee and eventually kills it. And if the population gets high enough in a hive, a hive could actually completely fail. And then it, it's basically dead. Despite the potential for the zombie fly to wreak havoc on bees and beekeepers alike, some scientists aren't too concerned. Like Brian Brown, curator of entomology at the Los Angeles Natural History Museum. The danger to beekeepers is fairly well controlled just by the fact that those flies are only found close to the coast. So there's probably some kind of climatic region why they won't move inland. So beekeepers who aren't right on the coast are probably safe with their bee colonies. This is just based on the relatively small amount of data that we have available. And data is exactly what Leela Higgins is searching for. We're calling on citizen scientists to help us figure out where exactly these uh, flies are, where the honeybees are going to be possibly infected. If you find a honeybee and it is acting strangely, collect it and put it in a vial and then see if any maggots come out and submit your data to the Zombie Watch website. Collecting honeybees can sound like a challenge, but luckily, Leela shows you how to build your own zombie fly trap. So we have two different types of zombie traps that you can make. This one is the cheaper of the two. This is just an old Gatorade bottle and a black light in there. And then this is a little bigger type of trap with just a regular compact fluorescent light bulb in it. The bees will fly into here and because they are zombified, they would be attracted to lights. They are gonna be disoriented. They're not gonna be flying very well. They would fall into the trap and then you'd be able to check it in the morning to see what zombies might be in there. Even though the zombie fly sounds like something you would find in a horror movie, scientists maintain a modicum of respect and understanding for the creature. These flies, just like every other creature on Earth, are trying to live their life. And they are trying to find food, shelter, water, space, and then a mate to pass on their genetic material. They're trying to survive. 
For Science Friday, I'm Christian Baker. For information on how you can become a zombie fly hunter, visit www.zombiewatch.org.